A number of EFF members camped outside the Johannesburg High Court today in support of Kanye Tageshe, the hashtag fees must fall activist sentenced to five years behind bars for public violence and malicious damage to property. He is accused of setting fire to a police vehicle in 2016. His advocate, uh, Tembega Ngogai Dobi, argued that Tageshe should be granted bail pending the appeal of his conviction and sentence. He said Tageshe, who has been behind bars since December of 2017, had been poorly represented and denied a fair trial. For more on this case and about other hashtag fees must fall activists facing prosecution and incarceration, I'm joined in the studio by Ndebo Lamini, who faces the same fate, and activist Nkanyiso Mulunga, who is uh, also Tageshe's uh, friend as well as an activist. Thank you very much to you both, and thanks for joining us. Yeah, Thank you for having us. Thanks. So perhaps let me start with you, Mr. Ngulunga. Obviously, the court proceedings today, the first time that Mr. Tageshe has been able to secure bail hearing. Is it looking good, given the allegations that he's made of unfair or um, un characteristic representation given the fact that he felt that he was represented by somebody who seemed either not to know anything or really didn't put in his best um, uh, what I will say is that um, based on the today's proceedings it is very promising because um, the state was not prepared to um, oppose the matter even though they had indicated that they seek to, to, pro, uh, to oppose the bail application. However, um, during the proceedings, um, when the, the legal arguments were raised by Ngugai Tobi, um, they then um, caucused that um, uh, uh, how they're going to deal with the matter. Then there was an agreement ultimately that was reached that the matter is going to be set down to, uh, and be taken back to the magistrate court because of the jurisdictional issues. But um, in my own analysis, there is prospects of success. Um, at the magistrate court because um, based on the um, merits of the case of which I don't want to dwell much on um, there is a possibility that um, the any sober judge will be able to grant a kind of mm. well, What are your thoughts about his saying that he was forced to plead guilty even though the burden of proof really lay with the state? Well, uh, as I'm saying, I don't want to dwell much of the because of the legal implications. But what I can say is that um, we do believe that there was not necessary support that um, was given even by the court itself to ensure that whenever a person um, pleads guilty, um, it is explained to, to them um, the legal consequences of doing so. So um, we do believe that necessary support was not given, and the objectives that are set out in the Constitution of the Republic, as well as the state, uh, as a, a Criminal Procedures Act says, that um, the, it is also the duty of the court to clarify to the accused um, the consequences mm. of, of pleading guilty. All right, so Mr. Lamino, what, what are your thoughts? You are facing a similar situation. You've got a hearing coming up, I think, in November. Yes. Hmm. Well, uh, look, uh, we, have, uh, we have been saying that the, the state doesn't have a case against any of the Fismas for activists. Today was evident enough what we have been saying for years now to say these people are wasting a taxpayer's money and wasting the court's time. Now, the, in the case of, of, of Kanye, there are gross irregularities unfair process, unfair procedure, in as much as he, he pleaded guilty, but the section 112 of the Criminal Procedure Act of the plea, uh, 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 of, 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 of the guilty plea says that you can't be found guilty based on your own uh, admission of guilt. There must be a process of questioning and, and examination and cross-examination even though we had already pleaded guilty. Those things didn't happen. Now, the, 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 the advocate, Tembega took this matter seven months ago. He's still struggling to get the, 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 the records, the transcripts, to say how did this person, how was he found guilty? There's no transcript. As I'm speaking to you, there is no transcript. The state prosecutor comes to court today, having not filed their affidavit, but they knew three weeks back that there is a court today. So I'm saying that now they don't have a case. It shows that they were in a hurry 
The charges were fabricated wherever they were fabricated to try and stall the, 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 the fire around the FISMAS for the movement because it was uncontrollable. The state was caught off guard. Government was caught off guard. They didn't have a mechanism. They didn't have means on how to deal with the protests around the country. Then they said, let's arrest all the leaders. Okay. I, and I want to talk about that, whether or not this was applied fairly, evenly, against all of the hashtag fees must fall activists. We've seen some who have been let go, uh, some saying even mm. on bigger or greater charges, and mm. yet some facing uh, incarceration, some facing prosecution. Why is that? Was it also, according to some of the rumors that we heard then, of uh, divide and rule? When I look, uh, I agree with you. Let me make an example. In Cape Town, there is no student in the entire of Cape Town who's still in court on the Fismas fall charges. And there's no student who was found guilty. All the charges were withdrawn. We have students at UCT who were charged with high treason during Fismas fall. High treason. Those charges were dropped because they were children of high-profile members of certain political parties. They were children of certain high-profile people who were leaders of ESCOM, and some of their parents were, were vice chancellors of certain universities. And those charges were dropped. We have students in certain universities who were charged with attempted murder. Those charges were dropped. You have people who are serving sentences today for charges as public violence. Now, it says to you that the state or the law has eyes. They focus on the poor and the marginalized, and they deal with them so that they appear as if they are working. Okay, we'll come to your case in just a moment. Mr. Ngoloa, do you share that point of view? Yes, I, I, I share the same sentiment because um, according to the records, uh, Hillbro Police Station, 72 criminal cases were opened at Hillbro relating to violence that took place um, during FISMA's fall. But the only the only person was tried and ultimately um, sentenced was Kanye Kageshe. So it also raises the question that um, what Mkabwe has already alluded to. It seems like... But why Mr. Kageshe? Why not any of the other activists? And uh, Mr. Kamini, we can talk about his case in just a moment, but why is that? Is it because he did admit that uh, somebody gave him uh, some petrol that he poured it on the police car, lit a match to it? Is it because of that admission? No, we can't really rely on that because we have tried to explain that even the guilty plea, it was based on advice of the lawyer. So um, we can't really rely on, on legal advices because they wanted just to get done with the processes and the court. So why is zero processes. in on him so, and other activists? Um, they, they obviously the state wanted to wanted someone to make an example or some sort of deterrence that mm. uh, when you fo when you focus or you you try to strike or protest something is going to happen to you. Hence, that's why Kanye is facing um, serious repercussions mm. for having formed part of the FISMAS so, movement. So, Mr. Tamini, you yes. face charges of public violence, malicious damage to property, and assault, and the matter continues. It despite attempts to have the charges withdrawn. Yes. Why is that? Well, uh, look, uh, 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 I wish I had a, an answer as to why, because uh, we, we have done everything within uh, the, the, the perimeters of the law. We have tried everything to say uh, how, even made proposals to the president, made proposals to the then Minister of, uh, of, of Justice to say, we are not ignorant of the fact that damage to property happened and the protests were violent, but we are saying all these things happened in the conditions at the time. There were tensions at the time. The conditions at the time and not the parameters of the law, as you suggested. The law is there, but the conditions at the time dictate protests by their nature are disruptive. Now, there was a call, there was a fight which was for free education. Students demanded attention from government. There was no attention coming forth. Then the, 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 the protests themselves deteriorated and took the, 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 the route that mm. they took. As we speak today, we are saying that government and the president came out and pronounced on the demands of the students. They have been saying that the fight for free education was a noble cause. Immediately when you say it was a noble 
cause. It means you nullify all their violence and whatever that might have happened so at the time. So you're saying the militancy was par for the cause? It wa we can't run away from the fact that there was violence. The violence was there and it did happen. But the, what the purpose we must not run or shy away from what was the fight for. It was a revolution. We can't say that a revolution now, it's like a, a, a wedding. We were fighting. There was blood. The, the free education that we talk about was a sacrifice. Careers were sacrificed. People put their bodies on the line. Students were shot with rubber bullets and life ammunition. Certain students died. Now, we are saying that because I have a problem when we define violence. To say violence is only when a student smashed a window, but it's not violence on the brutality and when the university excludes 3,000 to 4,000 black students, poor students, because they can't afford to pay. That's violent. You are killing those students. It's not only smashing a window. It's only violence when you disrupt white monopoly capital. It's only violence when you disrupt the status quo. We are in jail because we frustrated the system. Mm -hmm. Not that we protested. Right. We frustrated the system. Murderers. People who have looted billions of our parents' taxpayers' money are not in jail because it doesn't affect whiteness. It doesn't affect white monopoly capital. When you shut down vets, you affect sentin. You affect people's shares. That's why you must be arrested mm -hmm. because we are awakening a certain clique of blacks to say, it is, we are still okay. black, whether we are advanced, we are still black and we are poor. So Mr. Ngolunga, um, some of the commentary has been that uh, as much as I acknowledge what Mr. Tlamini here is saying, that it was a noble cause, that uh, there have been uh, politicians who have come out and said that, but there are also observers who said that during the protests, the rights of other students were encroached upon and that there must be an acknowledgement of that, even though there may not uh, be uh, a monolithic understanding of exactly what happened and how the war had to be fought per se. Yes. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think our, our problem in South Africa is that um, you know, these people who are at a better position because they are privileged based on their economic um, arms. So that is why we tend to share the same spaces with those people at the university level. So whenever we say we are poor, we are from townships, we are from villages, we want to access education. Education is not a commodity, but it is a way or a process of building human capital so that we invest in this country and do and transform our country. Then someone else who feels like they are entitled to education alone, then they come back and say their rights are being violated but there is a disproportionate number of black students who are getting excluded almost every day okay. financial exclusion and 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 in terms of the income so based levels. on that argument tell me about the process that is currently underway with the justice ministry on trying to expunge the charges the cases against those fees must fall activists who are being persecuted so to speak well, uh, the minister announced on media that um, people have not submitted the list so that he can begin with the process of um, um, uh, 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 pardoning people. Um, Is that then, true? Yes, we, we also instructed our attorneys on, to submit on behalf of Kanya. Then he acknowledged our, our communication with the minister. But um, he has not uh, said anything except for the acknowledgement of the email. He has not say, said anything in as far as this case of Kanya's concern. But I, I, I cannot say about others because I've not been mm. um, I'm not privy to do we know thing. how many activists uh, as to date as we speak that still face prosecution or are incarcerated and I'm asking both of you <coughs> well uh, look it's a piece just to add what uh, 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 the, the comrade is saying here I think it is it is gross for the Minister of Justice to come to the students and say now Tell me how many people who needs to be pardoned. And because that's an information that sits with him as the NPA is under him. Only the NPA knows how many people are in court. Fismas Fall was not a movement or a movement that was nationally coordinated. Each university was doing its own. We don't know each other. I didn't know him. I didn't know Kanya because you only know those that you have at vets. You don't know who's at UJ. So now for the Minister of Justice to then say to the activists, bring all the names, that's an insult. 
to the students and to the public. Okay. Because we're running out of time, Mr. Tamini, do either of you know the total number within your networks? And if so or not, besides that, how are you all supporting each other? Well, uh, last year, when we walked to the, to the president, now the NPA then said they have around 520 students who are still in court. But now, since then up to today, a lot of cases have been dropped. Mm -hmm. So even to like last week, I was still receiving inboxes from people to say my case have been dropped. So there are cases, but they are they are being they are suffering in silence. We don't know them. Some okay. of them are in mm -hmm. Kwa, some of them are in Venda. We don't know them. But the figures that we were given was that people are around five hundred and twenty. Mm -hmm. Finally, Mr. Ngolo, how are you all supporting each other? Oh, well, um, we support each other through um, social media. We raise awareness. We mobilize the entire country on social media to um, support each other as activists. And on the ground, we are very active at VETS and other institutions. We have collaborated with other organizations to ensure that um, all those um, student leaders who are facing charges or who are attending court cases, as well as those who have been um, sentenced, um, we, we bring justice for them. All right. Thank yeah. you very much to you both. Please, Ms. Fall, Activists Mkebo Lamini and Mkanyiso Mulunga.